Hey everybody, welcome back to the Reclamation Podcast, where our goal is to help you reclaim good practices for following Jesus. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tony and I am your host. Every single week I get to bring you incredible episodes, great conversations, and monologue episodes all about what it means to follow Jesus. We believe that through intentional dialogue, we can help you move closer to Christ. Guys, I'm really excited for today's episode. It's a little bit different. Today is a replay of an episode that I did on the Practitioners Podcast, which is a, another podcast that I host with my dear friend, Justin Gravitt. This podcast is all about disciple making. And I got to thinking that some of you might be ready to take that next step in the disciple making process. So Justin and I talk about seven habits of a highly defective disciple maker. And I think you're going to really enjoy this if you're further along on your faith. If you do enjoy it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts, leave a rating or review on iTunes or Spotify, and share this episode with a friend. Also, if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and subscribe to the Practitioners Podcast. We're going to have new episodes coming out in September. And so this is a teaser. This is kind of what you can expect. It's the two of us doing our thing for you, talking about disciple making. So now without any further ado, here's a replay of my conversation with Justin Gravitt on the Practitioners Podcast. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. Welcome back, everybody. Tony, I'm uh, thinking about habits today because our episode, so I got our random question that's slightly less random today. Um, what is one habit, maybe a bad habit uh, that you would like to get rid of or that you have gotten rid of uh, in the recent history, maybe the past six months or so? Uh, so I'm a little embarrassed to say this out loud, but it's just between me and you. So d- dear friends here, just the two of us, um, yep. I'm going to tell you the very honest God's truth. I have a really bad habit of biting my nails, specifically uh-huh. my fingernails, not toenails. That would be a whole different level of a bad habit. Specifically, <laughs> I do it in the car. So I'll get in the car and um, at a stoplight or something like that. And, and I, I just crush my fingernails. And I hate that about myself because it feels unclean. And I feel like I should, I'm 41. Yeah. At some point in my life, I should be past it. But uh, here we are. What about you? Here we are. Um, so for me, I'm really excited because last year, after years probably of trying, uh, I was finally successful in kicking my Mountain Dew habit. I used to have a Mountain Dew Definitely a few times a week. Uh, there was periods where it was every day, um, but I haven't had a Mountain Dew since uh, June, so I'm really excited wow. about that. Yeah, looking so forward. Wait, to I shared something that. really personal and intimate, and you shared one successful one. There's got to be Thank another you. habit that you want to get rid of in your life that feels a little bit more equally vulnerable. Huh? I don't think there is. What about correcting me? Can we put that on the list somewhere? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Uh, Thinking about, well, I will. So moving ahead, uh, I'd like to do less social media. I'll say that uh, to be on it less. Okay. All right. That's not not exceptionally vulnerable, but that's what I got for you. It's not exceptionally vulnerable. It's actually very popular right now, but you're, you've always been really uh, a popularity guy. (laughs) I'm super trendy, super Super trendy. Trendy. I couldn't think of the word trendy. I was like, (laughs) You've always been super trendy, which is it, that's anyway, right. that's yeah, it's neither here nor there. Uh, what Justin introduced the idea of habits to us today. Yeah. So today we're talking about the seven habits of a disciple. Um, so this conversation, I think, is really going to be helpful for people who are already making disciples, um, people who are young and being disciples, too, because it's really a, an episode about discipleship. Um, But before we even get into that, we got to talk about habits, right? Habits are super important because they automate our life and they are kind of the Mm -hmm. grooves of the tracks that our train runs in as we move through our lives together. And so if we can spend the time and effort that we need to put in to develop habits that are helpful, uh, it really just moves us ahead in those areas of our lives that where we're trying to be intentional. And so the habits that we're going to be talking about today are seven habits of a disciple that will help you grow and mature into not only a mature disciple, but also to a mature disciple maker. Well, and you know what's interesting is we're going to talk about seven, but the truth is, is that any habit that you decide to own and pick up will drastically change your life if you commit to it. And and so habits are really a blessing because what they do is they prevent you from 
checking out of um, of relationships. They prevent you from checking out of routines. W- one of the things I tell couples all the time is that most people don't fall in and out of love. They fall in and out of commitment. And it's not commitment to the relationship. Obviously, that's the bigger picture, but it's typically commitment to the habits or the disciplines of the relationship. So when couples break up, it's not because one day they woke up and they're like, man, I'm mad at my wife. I'm going to break up. No, what ends up happening is, is we end up um, kind of separating our lives over the years because we've given up the good habits of a healthy relationship. And so when we talk about discipleship, what we're talking about are the helpful habits, these seven uh, traits, seven basic habits um, are all centered around seven things you can do to keep a healthy relationship with God. Now, you don't have to do all seven, but eventually, I, I think most of us would say we want to get to all seven, and and that's part of of how we build the relationship with our Lord. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. I love that idea about commitment, right? And so if we're going to be committed to our relationship with God, then it takes some work. It takes some intentionality. And those intentional habits will drive us towards intentional and intimate relationship with God. But it's a commitment, right? Around that commitment to doing those things and to showing up consistently so that we can have that outcome that we're looking for uh, which is that intimate relationship with God. Tony, before we started, you came up with a uh, kind of a equation to talk about this. Can you share that with us? Yeah. I, I, intentional habits plus intentional time equal um, an intimate relationship, right? Intentional habits, excuse me, let me say this again. Intentional habits plus an intimate time can help us lead us to an intimate relationship, um, and, and let me explain this a little bit because I, I know, first of all, I, I kind of garbled that up a bit, but <laughs> um, habits are really important because they keep us in track, but intentionality in those habits and intimacy in those habits lead us to an intimate relationship. So, so let me elaborate. Y- you can't rush intimacy. You can't rush intimacy. So if you want this intimate relationship with God, you can't show up day one and just expect it to be there and to be present and to automatically assume that everything's going to click. There are so many times that I read scripture and it doesn't feel intimate. But then on occasion, when I'm intentional in my habit and I created some intimate time, there's this intimate part of our relationship where I feel like I see God in a whole different level and I let God see me not that God can't anyway, he's God, of course he can, but I let God see me. I open up to this intimacy in a deeper way that that strengthens who we are or who I am as a follower of Christ. D- does that make sense, Justin? Yeah, I love that. That's really good. That's a good way to think about it and a good way to say it. Um, so as we get into these seven basics, I want to just acknowledge we've referenced these before in season one, episode eight. Uh, the the title of that episode is Disciplines of a Disciple, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth on these today. And Tony, why don't I just walk through the seven, I'll kind of name them, and then talk, talk about how, how that impacts you and maybe one or two that you really um, feel a lot of uh, growth or intimacy from as you engage that with God. Okay, Perfect. so um, these came to me actually as a young disciple, the person who was discipling me. And I, I got a lot of this stuff when I was being discipled because I wasn't discipled with curriculum or through a book, a curriculum sort of way. But uh, I was just given stuff that was passed down through spiritual generations. And, you know, fortunately for me, I have some some heavy hitters in my spiritual lineage, such as uh, Leroy Imes, Dawson Trotman. And so, again, I don't know that these came from him, but they very well could have come from one or both of those guys. Um, so the first one, it's always first is assurance of salvation or the gospel, right? Another way to label that is the gospel. Um, So uh, that is always first. The other six are in no particular order. Um, So just in the ordering that we have it today, the second would be a quiet time. So that daily devotional time in the word and in prayer that you would have with God. Uh, The third one is prayer. 
the fourth one is witnessing or sharing our faith with others, with others that don't yet know Jesus or follow him. Uh, the fifth one is fellowship, or we might say community today. Um, just those uh, quality, in-depth relationships that we have with other believers. And we kind of referenced and talked all around that in the last episode um, of our podcast here. The sixth one is scripture memory. So memorizing chunks or verses of scripture and really hiding it in your heart. And the seventh one is Bible study. So really in-depth, intentional, inductive sort of Bible study uh, would be the seventh. So again, I'll run through those assurance of salvation or the gospel, quiet time, prayer, witnessing, fellowship, uh, scripture memory, and Bible study. Tony, what's what's your reaction to this this list of seven? Uh, well, I, I would say that I've um, been very fortunate like you to be discipled by some pretty incredible people. And um, quiet time and prayer were probably the the first two places where I started to really build intimacy with God. They're the easiest. Jesus models them all throughout scripture. Um, you know, we kind of see over and over again, Jesus with his quiet time. Uh, prayer is, is, you know, something that you can do communally. And then fellowship is always something I've been pretty good at. Now, the, the rest of these kind of steps outside of the assurance of salvation, which I've never really wrestled with, um, it are, are different in different seasons have meant different things for me. So I, I always do a quiet time and I always do a prayer time. Um, I don't normally have to worry about fellowship. Um, I don't normally have to worry about witnessing, although sometimes I can become a little insulated, but scripture memory and Bible study are the two when I'm really feeling disconnected from God that I'll lean into to build up some, some intimacy. Um, and, and typically I have to go old school. I have to go paper, right? When, uh, mm-hmm. when, when you and I, um, went on our silent retreat uh, last year. This was one of those things for me where I, I pulled out my paper Bible. I wrote in the margins. I, you know, I did some things differently and it really created that intimacy. So in this particular case, it was um, less about a habit, but more about an intentional practice for a given period of time. So I, I don't know what, what seems to hit most for you. Yeah, for me, um, the gospel is one that really helps keep me centered and focused. Um, so not as much on that, the assurance of salvation, but more of who am I in Christ and what are the the messages that the gospel gives to me uh, each and every day? I think it was Jerry Bridges that popularized the idea of um, preaching the gospel to yourself every day. Mm. And what that does, it really helps because it reminds us that we're sinners but it also reminds us that that God loves us so deeply. Uh, and so we, we can tend to drift between feeling um, self-conscious or unworthy or feeling too confident and too worthy. And so the gospel kind of keeps us centered in the middle there of, no, I am a sinner, but I'm saved by grace and, and God loves me um, tremendously for who I am. And as a result, I can move forward. So uh, that's normally a big one for me. The other one is scripture memory. Uh, So for me, scripture memory has always been kind of where I, where I get fed the most um, from the habit of memorizing, but also review and just doing prayer times through scriptures that, that I am memorizing or have memorized in the past uh, really has helped me uh, to grow and to develop some deep roots uh, in my faith. Um, now there is I, one I, I want to ask you. Oh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to ask you this question too. So there's one that's always a stretch for me on this list. Uh, and the one that's, that's normally a stretch is the witnessing one. Uh, when I think about consistent communication of the gospel, now consistent modeling of the gospel, living out the gospel, that's not as much of a stretch, but consistently talking about the gospel talking about Jesus with those people in my life that don't yet know him. Um, that's normally a stretch and a challenge for me. And and having it on the list really helps um, continue to put that in front of me and to move me in that direction. So is there one of those for you, Tony, that there's one that's consistently a stretch for you? Oh, it's scripture memory. It's scripture memory every day of the week and twice when you ask me about it in our meetings. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, and, you know, it's it's not, the idea of scripture memory is always really great. And I don't have any problems with the idea of it. Um, but I do have not always been great about 
putting that practice into my life on a regular basis. Because if you're going to do scripture memory well, it requires kind of a uh, the same way that you would do prayer well. It, it requires a um, kind of a pray without ceasing, memorizing without ceasing kind of mentality, right? You've got to continually pick it up and, and flex that muscle. Like going to the gym, it's got to be one of those habits that fills in the cracks of our day that, or maybe there's some dead time or something like that. And that's, um, you know, that that's always been a little bit of a difficult time for me. Um, but, you know, it, it's a growing edge and, and I'm always... Yeah, there are a lot of relationships that I'm in where there are spaces in that relationship that I struggle with. And uh, th- I just consider it a privilege that this is one in, in my relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, so if you're, if you're listening to this and you're discipling somebody, especially a younger believer, um, these are things that you can move through and you can move through these topics with people um, at varying levels of depth, right? So you could talk about prayer at a 101 sort of level, but you could have prayer 201, 301, 401, graduate school level in terms of talking about what is prayer? How does it work? What are we doing? And in discipling, we have to remember that our goal is not education, it's transformation. And so just because you've covered something or talked about it, if it's not showing up yet in that person's life, if they're not being obedient to the scriptures in that area, then, you know, there's more there. There's more meat on that bone that you need to go back to as a disciple maker and continue to help them with that. And so um, this is a really helpful list as you think about, well, what could I do with the person I'm discipling? What are the things that they might need help with? Now, Tony, you said earlier that intentional habits plus intentional time can help lead us to an intentional relationship. So, I totally agree with that. I love that, how, how you've communicated about that. Um, is, is there a way that we can be engaging in these habits and not have intimacy developing? Yes, yes. I, I think when we create um, the, the intentional time without the intimacy, what ends up happening is we're just checking the block off. You know what I mean? We're, we're checking out. So I, one of the things that I'm really passionate about, and I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit, is that we have to create these disciplines, these habits with the mindset of intimacy into me see, right? Into me see, into my heart. So God really cares about the posture of your heart, right? And we, and we see that in the way that Jesus preached. We see that in the way that Jesus did life with people. He wanted to transform someone's heart. So if you're doing a quiet time and you're like, hey, I'm going to take 15 minutes and do a quiet time and you read through your devotional, you read through your chapter, whatever you're reading, and you don't ask the Holy Spirit to be in your heart, if you don't invite the Holy Spirit in, if you don't intentionally like surrender some of these things, then you don't have it, right? You don't have that intimacy. Same thing with scripture memory. You can have the entire Bible memorized, but if you're not asking God for those words to penetrate your heart, uh, you know, what's first Corinthians 13 tell us, or just the, the clanging of a symbol or a rusty gate, you know, th- those are kind of the things that when we think about these habits, these disciplines, what we're talking about is, is creating intimate time. So, so some of my tips for intimate time are, um, music. If you're a music person, let the music in, let it light a candle. Um, I use the same space just about every day. And that space has become intimate space to me because God has done some things there. And I always start by asking the Holy spirit to fill up this space and place and to lead me through these habits. Uh, what are some of the ways that you build intimacy? Yeah, I love, um, you know, really just slowing down. So for me, it's uh, it's catching up internally with what I'm trying to do externally. And so I do that through prayer. Um, mm-hmm. So when I first am in that space with God, uh, I just try to stop and to calm down my thoughts, um, you know, to focus on him so that I can be present with him. So I'm not just checking a box. And I think anyone that's tried to follow Jesus for any amount of time, you know that experience where you you are taking the time because you want intimacy and you want these intentional habits, but you you end up just going through the motions and checking the box. And that's that's not what, what we're trying to do, right? So the disciplines or the habits 
they're means to an end. They're not the end themselves. And so we have to really be aware and cognizant of, all right, well, yeah, I know I, I got my reading plan here. I'm trying to get through the Bible in a year or whatever it is. But if that's not, if you feel like you're sitting down and praying and God is is asking you just to spend time with him that day, you know, it's better to do that because you're developing that intimacy um, through connecting with him, not through accomplishing a plan. Right. And so that's for me, the biggest thing is I, as I'm trying to develop intimacy, it's taking time to slow down, to pray, to check in with where I'm at and to be honest with God with where I'm at and to allow that to lead into my habits. I love it. I love it. So many good things here. So many um, nuggets of truth that we all need to remember. Let me give you the takeaway for today's episode. Intentional habits plus intimate time can help lead us to an intimate relationship with the Lord. Intentional habits plus intentional time can help lead us to an intimate relationship with the Lord. So your action step is simple but not easy. Evaluate your intimacy level with God by doing an intentional habit inventory. Out of the seven that we listed, how many are you doing, right? How many are challenging you? Or are you just going through the motions? No judgment either way, but is there a way that intentional habits plus intimate time can help build your intimate relationship with God. As always, we're incredibly thankful that you gave us your time today. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts. Want to make sure you don't miss another episode. Uh, Next week, we're going to dive into the impact of consumerism on disciple making. It's going to be hot and heavy. We're going to do that two weeks in a row. The best way to make sure you don't miss an episode, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, leave a rating or review on iTunes. And hey, do us a favor share this episode with a friend. So thankful for you guys. Look forward to connecting real soon.